Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go to Off the Press and uh, have a quick review of the stories making headlines across Nigeria today. I'm starting with the Daily Independent. Uh, we'll be sharing that with you on your screen in just a few seconds. Just before we also introduce our guest, the big one um, on your screen this morning. Yes, that's, that's, there it is. It says, Buhari backs Buni as forces ask him to quit as chairman. Stakeholders want Tinubu to speak out. Masari orders closure of major roads in Katsina to tackle banditry, bans lorries from moving cattle to other states. Also, Nigeria attracts $10.1 billion foreign investments in six months, minister says, and also says country's economy getting stronger. September 4th, APC local government congresses, so I took that already. Labor kicks ahead planned electricity tariff increase. And also CBN asks banks to publish names and DVN of, foreign, of Forex policy defaulters. 2021 UTME, Varsity's Polis, COEs at liberty to set cut-off marks, says JAMB, may prosecute institutions that violate central admission guidelines. No new constitution, no 2023 election, Afeni Ferre insists. Ondo outlaws open grazing as a carrier to lose signs bill into law. And also telcos lose revenue to slow deployment of 3G and 4G. That's on the Daily Independent. Now let's see on the Punch newspapers this morning. Compulsory vaccination. NMA. Johesu kick as federal government threatens sanction. You can't force people. Enlighten them. NMA health workers advise federal government. And also court stops at door uh, from uh, enforcing the um, uh, sanctions on vaccination. People who reject vaccine endangering others, rules will be applied, says NPH CDA boss. Still in the news, six Tucano jets cost almost $500 million, says the United States envoy. Courts um, order interim forfeiture of Abiodun uh, AIDS uh, bank accounts and house. And also, we owe salaries due to uh, paucity of funds, says Akiri Dulu. A friend fairy tells Nigerians to defend themselves against bandits. Fix your cut-off marks, Jam tells Varsities and others. Uh, we can also find on the punch this morning, PDP leaders visit Jonathan, beg, uh, beg ex-president to stay. Um, a few others on the punch this morning. Open grazing, Lagos, Delta, Cross River bills pending as deadline ends today. Six million electricity customers still unmetered amid federal government schemes. And also, Pengasan blames rising cooking gas prices on Forex. Out of school children, federal government not responsible, says Oshimbajo. And also, the Nigerian Tribune this morning. September 1st, anti open grazing deadline, where southern states stand. Conflicting court orders, CGN summons chief judges of Rivers, Kebi, Imo, Anambra, two other states. And also, Oyo records vaccinate, uh, vaccine derived polio case. Kano has 2 million drug addicts, says NDLEA boss. And uh, we can also find here Plateau uh, military warns residents against uh, self defense. All right, um, we'll move away from the Nigerian Tribune and quickly get on the stories from the Guardian newspapers this morning. Federal government set to sanction Nigerians refusing COVID 19 vaccination. Court restrains Obaseki from making vaccination compulsory. Edo civil servants get seven-day ultimatum to get inoculated. JAM abolishes own cut-off marks, tertiary institutions to decide. And also states, not federal government should be blamed for nation's education woes, says Oshimbajo, the vice president. Uh, motorcyclists defy ultimatum, take over Obalende Ikoi axis. Still on The Guardian this morning, Akere Dulu ignores Metiala, signs anti-open grazing law, uh, bill rather, into law. Good morning to Adimola Akingbola, publisher of the Podium Media. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me there. Great to see you. All right, so let's start with the anti-open grazing bill. Uh, the um, uh, Rotimi Akere Dulu has, of course, uh, put that into motion. He has signed the, uh, the bill into law. Um, the other southern states, of course, are still pending 
Um, what do you think of all of this? Well, we saw it coming. The cloud had been gathering for quite some time, really. Um, if you remember the Southern governors, after their meeting, I think two months ago or so, they did say that they were resolute in their opposition to open grazing. So the Ondo state government has um, done what it said it would do by signing it into law. And just as we have said earlier on, this is something that the federal government could have avoided. This, this is a needless controversy that should have been avoided a long time before now. And the moment you have governors daring the president going different ways, then you, 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 you begin to wonder how development will happen in such, uh, in such a situation. So yes, I mean, it, we, we knew that it would come to this stage. And um, for me, uh, the certain governors, they have said they would do it and they are beginning to carry out their, 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 their promise. So it's, it's okay, it's okay. Each state has absolute control over how it wants grazing to be done. And I really don't think the federal government should make a fuse out of this. So it's fine. It's okay. fine. All it's right. Not yeah. and, and, you know, is there any other point, you know, for, you're seeing from the delay of other southern states to do the same as Roti Makirudulu has done? Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on each state as of assembly and the, the, the composition, okay? Um, Akirudulu being a learned governor himself being a senior advocate of Nigeria has developed the courage and probably is taking it his time to study the laws of the land and he knows that he is on the right course. Other governors may be tentative in their approach. Maybe they are not too sure that is the best thing to do. But ultimately, mm -hmm. I also know that the federal government has behind the scene be lobbying the governors to ensure that this doesn't come to this level. But apparently, I mean, there's nothing anybody can do about it. Or your state is going on those states is going, I see more states joining very soon. Yeah. All right. Um, moving away from um, grazing now, let's go to education where there's uh, news across all the papers saying JAM has given uh, tertiary institutions uh, freedom to cut, set their own cutoff marks. Um, what are your thoughts uh, concerning this? Excellent. That's the way it's done all over the world. Excellent. Each university, each polytechnic should determine which student is eligible to be enrolled for specific courses, okay? What JAMP needs to do is to coordinate. Okay, as far as I know, in developed world, universities, they have their own criteria, they have admission requirements, and they are able to really oversee all of this, okay? What we find in Nigeria is that some students, they pass JAMP and they fail post-JAMP, okay? So, which means something is wrong somewhere, okay? At the same time, I, I don't know how JAM will do this. There needs to be some checks and balances. I, I, I wouldn't want the universities to have absolute control. Okay, being who we are in Nigeria, um, the corruption in the education sector and all that, standards may nose dive further if there isn't any form of check and balances from a central coordinating body. But all in all, it's a good thing for universities to have more say on um, admission requirements and the entire process. Yeah. Yeah, but, but that, uh, is there a fear that um, some universities, in order to you know, accommodate more of their students, and I'm bringing this up because of the controversy we've had concerning Unity School cutoff marks in the, you know, over yeah. time, um, is there a fear that there might be some universities that might have you know, an extremely low well, you know, reasonably low cut-off mark and eventually yeah. not be able to produce good quality um, education yeah. or good quality, you know, students or yeah. graduates, rather. Absolutely. And that's why, I, that's why I said that we shouldn't give them absolute control, okay? I, I don't know how this will be worked out, but there needs to be a central coordinating body that, that will, that will um, have a say in the final selection process. Otherwise, universities... The standards will go down further. If you look at what's happening in private universities, private polytechnics, it's 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 just it's it's um it's so sad, okay, that graduates of Nigerian universities cannot even fit into any private sector. Most of them, most of them, and that starts from the admission process. 
when you admit students who ordinarily should not have been admitted, they go through an education system that is compromised and that is not really up to standard. You produce mushroom graduates who have little or nothing to add to the economy. Okay, so yeah. I agree with you. That fear is there, it's real, and it needs to be addressed. Yeah. All right, and then, you know, yeah. moving away from education now, let's talk health. Um, there's, of course, stories yeah. across all the papers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Nigeria that, you know, has done vaccinations of maybe four, you know, million. Um, the last um, AstraZeneca was just about four million doses that arrived. Um, but there are conversations about... Um, um, uh, uh, sanctioning Nigerians who refuse COVID-19 vaccinations. And in Edo State, you know, there's even, you know, stricter sanctions um, asking that people would not be able to get into banks and, you know, public spaces if they have not been vaccinated. Um, do you think we are ripe for such conversations and such sanctions yet? It's, pre it's preposterous, really. It, it, it's, against, it, it's against common sense. Because I've not seen any country in the world where this is taking place in the U.S., in the U.K., in Canada, where they have adequate vaccines. They are not forcing people. In Nigeria, where you don't even have enough vaccines. So this is a distraction that we don't need, okay? If government is really interested in having more people um, get vaccinated, there are moral suasion, mobilization, encouragement, as it is being done all over the world. You can't force people because it is within the fundamental human rights to accept to be vaccinated or not, okay? So what you can do is to put measures in place to ensure that public events, public places, there are tighter restrictions on who comes in and who does not come. Okay? I mean, you are out, and the other side to it, how are you going to enforce it anyway? Are you going to enforce it? Are you going to ask them to, 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 to carry their vaccination card all over the place? So it's something that, one, it cannot be fully uh, and first two, it's not necessary in a country where you don't even have enough vaccine. All this energy should be directed towards getting more vaccine to the country. Okay? This energy, this time that is being wasted should, should be focused on, let's get more vaccines. We need to get them. So it, it, it's a needless um, discussion, it's a needless threat, and I want to believe that some somewhere along the line, someone will come out to disown that threat. Yeah. No, let's it's, see. It's, it's, it's against common yeah. sense, yeah. Let's see how it goes. And, of course, um, I believe that yeah. uh, there's more AstraZeneca vaccines that are being uh, uh, given mm -hmm. uh, as it stands. Mm -hmm. I think that started mm -hmm. sometime this week. And also Moderna uh, vaccines. Just to put that out there for everyone who is still unvaccinated and would like to get a shot. Um, yeah, but we, the, we, still, we still don't have up to 30 or 40% coverage of the population, do we? No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. So what's, what's the first about all right. The vice president is in the news. This is on The Guardian. It says states, not federal government, should be blamed for the nation's education woes. And that's coming from Vice President Tiemi Oshimbajo. Do you think he has a point? He has no point. Unfortunately, he has no point. Both should be um, held responsible. First, education is on the concurrent list, Okay, which means both state governments and federal government, they have equal stay in it. So the federal government has been mushrooming universities all over the country. The federal government is not funding education. Why is ASU going on strike? Is it the business of state governments to fund ASU? No. Universities are not being funded. Research works are not being funded. So that is the aspect that concerns the federal government. State governments also, they have the State Universal Basic Education Board under their direct supervision. What's happening to the funds there? So what Oshiba had meant to say, I mean, I want to believe that what he should have said was that state government should account for the funds that have been directed to SUBEM, okay? State, uh, primary education is so, primary and secondary education is solely under the control of the states. So whatever mm -hmm. happens there, uh, the, uh, the state government should be held responsible. But federal universities, the federal government has full responsibility. So both the federal government and the state government should be held responsible. The vice president shouldn't dodge this, shouldn't play politics with this. Government at all levels have failed woefully in education management in Nigeria. Education is not being well funded. The little funds that have been allocated have been diverted for, 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 for um, purposes that have not to do with education. So local government, state government, federal government, they are all to blame for the power of education in Nigeria today. 
Um, something that I mentioned yesterday, one of the things that we discussed yesterday with the um, ASU okay. president, in, and that was Nigeria's uh, you know, interest in education um, and the interest of the current government to actually invest more in education. W what do you think um, the government is or has failed and is still failing to do with regards to investment in education? Is it infrastructure that is a challenge or just making you know, education more accessible to more Nigerian kids? Over the years, you will find that successive governments have always voted more money for defense and other mundane activities over education. Education has never gotten a significant portion of the project. So one, underfunding is a big problem. Two, infrastructure is also an issue. Of course, underfunding results, obviously, in poor state of infrastructure, poor condition of service, okay? Education has hardware and software. The hardware, the classroom, the infrastructure, the software, the lecturers, the teachers, are we taking care of them? No, we are not. So government has failed on both sides. We are not building good infrastructure, no world standard um, uh, educational infrastructure. We are not taking care of the lecturers. So where is the money going to? So on both sides, we are not doing well. We're not doing well at all. all right. I mean, we, we, why, why should also be going on strike all the time? So government has not done well at all. Okay, it's, it's not. It's not um, something that we should be proud of. Some yeah. other thing, you know, that I want you to speak on. It's not in the yeah. news this morning, but it is the. Um, I think it, it, it came out yesterday. The controversy concerning the CBN uh, uh, contracting yeah. Beats Incorporated, a Barbados-based um, uh, fintech um, startup. Uh, to, of course, uh, be, you know, a partner for e Naira. There's a lot of people who have, you know, spoken very, very seriously against it and, you know, are hoping that it, it be reversed. Do, do you think, yeah. you know, that we could have done different? Yeah, my, 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 my own concern is that the process was not open and transparent, as in everything Nigeria, okay? We, we, we do not know the pedigree of this company. We do not know how they got to, I mean, to the state where, they, are, they were awarded the contract. A lot of things happen in, in Nigeria that you just see the end result. The process is not transparent. You don't know how they got. Stakeholder relationship management is a major issue for most public institutions in Nigeria. You want people to support your policies. You want them to implement these policies. You don't even carry them along. You don't sensitize them. You don't educate them. You don't reorientate them. Suddenly, you announce policies and people begin to suspect, people begin to wonder, where is this coming from? So for me, the process is far, far from being transparent, is far, far from being open. And the question is, do we need them? No, we don't. There's, no, we there's don't. arguments that there's Nigerian uh, fintech uh, companies that should have been able to do they pretty not. much the same, and you didn't need to they outsource not. it. There are quite a lot of Nigerian companies that could have done this perfectly. And you see, when people want to do something that they, that they can't defend, they go through the back door, okay? Because otherwise, this would have been thrown open. It, it should have been a way to encourage local startups come through competitive bidding. Okay, if at all you need a fintech company, throw it open, let them bid, let them go to to, to the records of, of of being interviewed and being screened. Then everybody will be happy. But hey, this is not this is not on at all. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's move away from that. Let's go to security now. Okay. On the Daily Independent, one okay. of the stories there uh, says um, it's from uh, Governor Bilo Masari, orders closure of major roads in Katsina to tackle banditry. Uh, okay. Bans lorries from moving cattle to other states. Um, quickly okay. also yeah. share your thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like we said there sometimes ago, if you get to a stage where each state government and individual would devise the best means to enforce security because the federal government has failed the nation in terms of maintaining security. So each local government, each state government, individuals would need to come up with ingenious ways of ensuring security. So I I, 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 I support Masari. If he has discovered that that will work, why not? At the end of the day, we want results. We want lives to be preserved. Okay, so the approach may be unconventional, but hey, the point at which Nigeria is, we need unconventional solutions to tackle the problem of um, 
banditry, insurgency, and all of that. So, I mean, the, the federal government does not have any moral right to query any state government that decides to take um, precautionary measures to ensure that lives have been well served. So, yeah, absolutely. And don't forget, the same as I told us some weeks ago that we should defend ourselves. Everybody should, should go, go up in arms. And we said, oh, no, he, he shouldn't have said that. But Alfred Inferior is also saying that now. They're asking people to, to, have to defend themselves. So what are we tending towards? Anarchy. Absolutely. Do you, would you describe it as lazy, how the, uh, well, we have simply just accepted to name these criminal elements bandits um, without digging deeper to find out who exactly they are and what exactly they want? Um, yeah. Because when, when yeah, you he, give he, them that name, yeah. you know, it's a different yeah. case if they are, you know, robbing people or stealing mm. property. Uh, but mm. these people don't seem to be taking any property. They are simply yeah. terrorizing and yeah. killing people. Yeah. They are terrorists. They are not bandits. Because bandits, to, to say they are bandits is putting it mildly. Okay. And, and, and I think banditry was coined by the media. Okay. Let's look at the activities of these guys. Like you said, they kill, they maim, they destroy. They don't do this for the money. When Most times when they kidnap, they collect the money and say, kill people. So they are terrorists. And the earlier we upgrade the term that we're using for them, the better. You keep calling them band bandits are just mere thieves who loot, who steal, and don't kill. But these guys are killing. So they are terrorists, they are enemies of the state, and they should be treated as such. So yeah, you are right. Calling them bandits, it, it, it's like it's like um, um, slapping them on the wrist. Yeah, but it, it, it still is difficult to understand because if you if you look at Boko Haram or yeah. ISWAP, you can you can tell you know from what we've experienced over time that they have a motive, they have a, a reason for yeah. their atrocities. I think yeah. it was yesterday or two days ago there was another attack by ISWAP. Um, yeah. But you can, you can tell that there is a reason behind some of the atrocities and the killings that they've committed. Mm -hmm. But bandits, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's no actual story behind these persons that we've called bandits. There's yeah. no leadership yeah. either. There's there's no yeah. foundation for calling mm -hmm. them bandits in the first place. No, no, no. And 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 to make to to make myself worse, we have coined another word: unknown government. Okay, so bandits, unknown government. How can how can government be unknown? In a serious country where you have the, all the military institutions functioning or supposedly functioning. Okay, so it, it is an organized syndicate, it's an organized terrorist um, cartel that has won to destroy government activities, to maim, to kill. And I'm surprised that the federal government has not deemed it fit to declare the state of emergency in Plato State, in Benue State, in Zamfara State. Because until you do that and you roll out the soldiers, you are not going to get to the root of this matter. So for now, we are treating these guys with kids' gloves by saying they are bandits. They are not bandits. They are terrorists. Okay? And we should stop saying they are unknown government. Saying they are unknown government is like saying the security apparatus has failed. We know it has failed. But are we now going to throw our hands in the air and say, oh, <laughs> oh, God, help us. So yes, there is a mission, there's, there's, there's a vision, there's an organized approach towards this crime, and they are being well-funded. So it, it goes above banditry. Yeah. This is much more, it's worse than banditry. And if we don't see it that way, that will define the way the federal government will really treat them. They should be well, treated as terrorists, if you ask me. They are terrorists. Hopefully, we might come back to this, you know, to quickly yeah. speak on the um, state of emergency perspective. Well, let's move on to something else. Still on the Daily okay. Independent, it says that the labor kicks ahead of a planned electricity tariff increase. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, EKEDC spokesperson, you know, has denied that that you know that was true. Um, but yeah. of course, we know th uh, the, the way things play out in Nigeria. There's rumors here and there, yeah. and eventually becomes reality. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? Well. For now, it is still a matter of um, conjecture. It's, it's, it's not being officially announced. So um, let's let's hope and pray that it won't come to that. But the question is, if eventually they go ahead to increase that, it, what can we do? These companies have been privatized. Haven't they? They've been privatized. Okay, when NEPA was unbundled, 
they, 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 they cannibalize Nepal and they hand it over, Nepal over to all these guys. So it's like we've given them the free reign to do whatever they want. So I, I, in the face of the law, what can we do? We can protest, we can shout, but can we stop them from doing these things? I, 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 I do not think so. I, I really well, do not well, think so. Well, there is the NERC, you know, that I believe yeah. should be able to uh, take a stand, yeah. you know, when, you know, the, the, they might be going overboard. Um, but it's, yeah, but let, but, but let me ask you, has the Nigerian Communication Commission be able to stop telcos from doing all the nonsense they do? No. The Nigerian, has he been stopped banks from extorting customers? No. In Nigeria, the regulatory agencies exist only on paper. By default or by design, they are ineffective. And stories are all over the place that most executives of these agencies are on the payroll of the companies they are meant to supervise. That's why they are not effective. So the Nigerian Electricity Regulation and the Nigerian company should have been proactive about this. But it's like, it's just keeping quiet. So what I see going on is that at the end of the day, they probably will announce an increase of maybe 50%. And any else will intervene to say, no, bring it down to 20%. At the end of the day, there will still be an increase. That has been the pattern in Nigeria. And people will think that, oh, the NRC has intervened, they've saved us. It's, it's, it's a script that has been written out. And each yeah. time this thing plays out, they get away with it. And you and I, the people who are the receiving end, we, 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 we keep holding the short end of the stick. So that's why I started by saying, can we even do anything about it? Who is going to save us? Nobody. What is going to save the common man? Reminds, it's, it's um, unfortunate. reminds me of the Adam Sushomila days as NLC chairman, where there's an increment yeah. uh, to a particular figure, there's a protest, mm -hmm. and then it you know comes down, but never goes back yeah. to, to where no, it was coming no from. No way, no way. That's what's <laughs> going to happen. That's Nigeria for you. Okay. Fuel price, the same thing. Just wake up, it goes up, oh, then they negotiate, and it's okay. Bring. So it, it is a script that has been carefully written, and they are, they are following the script. I mean, oh, wow. they, they, they start by, 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 uh, by, what do you call it, flying some kites, and they allow the <laughs> discussion to go on in the public space to gauge the mood of the people. Then that helps them to know exactly where to, where to fix the price. So, All right. No new yeah. constitution, no 2023 election, and that is from Afeni Fere. It's on the Daily Independent still, bottom right of the page. No new constitution, no 2023 election. Uh, Mr. Akimbola. Yeah, yeah that, that's the way it should be. But you and I know that that's just a sandbite from Afeni Fere. I mean, I, 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 I have got it tired of people making statements that they cannot enforce. We all know that we can't have a new constitution between now and 2023. Simply because, one, the National Assembly that is mandated to do it is not even thinking that direction. So that's, that, that's not going to work. And after you very cannot go ahead and boycott the election because there's no new constitution. <laughs> That's not going to work. That is the desirable thing to do. Okay? That is what I would have loved to see. In fact, if possible, let's postpone 2023 election until we resolve this constitutional crisis, until we have a constitution that Nigerians will be proud of, until we have a constitution that serves the interests of the people. That is the way it should be. But I, I like to be realistic most times. I don't see that happening between now and 2023. Except by, by proclamation of National Assembly to say, look, there should be no election until we fix the Constitution. They are not saying that. It's not even, it's not, it's not on the front burner for them. It's not important to them. Yeah. All right. Um, back to security discussions. Uh, now talking about Tucano jets. Uh, the U.S. envoy is saying that the six Tucano get, uh, jets cost almost $500 million, Mr. Kingbola. Mm. <laughs> That's a lot of money. And, and, you know, why I'm pointing that out is because, you know, we still have a lot of investments that we should have been able to, able to put in with regards to fighting insecurity here in Nigeria. Um, do you, as, as much as I know that we need those jets, do you know that with one-tenth of that money, we can reduce significantly the level of um, insecurity in Nigeria, if, if you pump that money into local vigilante groups, harm them, motivate them, we, we will achieve a lot. These criminals, they live in our midst. They don't, they don't, they are not spirits, right? They are human beings who are known to some people. 
Okay? If we are able, those deers will not come and fight on the ground. Okay? So, half of that money, one-tenth of that money, if we deploy it effectively into providing welfare, harming the armed forces, we will achieve a lot. Because I do not know what we are going to achieve by spending all that money to have those jets. All the Air Force jets that we have, have they not been dropping from the sky to the point that even one of them was shot at my book on them? It, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to have, but can we afford it? Can Absolutely we afford not. it? Finally. And is, yes, okay. All right, fi uh, finally, um, uh, this one yeah. is pretty much uh, has been all over the news since yesterday. And it is uh, court judgments for sale. The NBA president, yeah. uh, Olumide Akpata, criticizing yeah. uh, you know, lawyers and judiciary officers mm -hmm. who have basically yeah. been helping politicians buy court judgments. The CGN yeah. also summoned six uh, chief judges, uh, six chief ju judges of uh, six different states um, yeah. to have a meeting with him. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Kimbala, what, what's the challenge with our judiciary? Why are we having... Uh, you know, one, you know, case having multiple, you know, court judgments. The Nigerian judiciary is not insulated um, from the corruption that has um, held up, that has consumed virtually all the public sectors, okay? Judges are human beings. They are vulnerable to being compromised and that's what's happening, Okay. So what is the CG going to be telling them that what you are doing is wrong, stop doing it? Those guys, will, they will tell you, yes, we've heard, and they will go back. We've always known that justice in Nigeria is for the highest bidder. That's, that's not news. We've always known. Even at the lowest level, if you go to the magistrate court at the lowest level, you see cases being adjudicated in some very funny ways that suggest that money has change hands. The same thing at the highest level. Most politicians, when they steal money, they, 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 they have uh, a sizable amount allocated for litigation. Because yeah, they know... But is, is, there, is there anything that the CGN can actually do? I mean, should, yes. would you expect judges to be sanctioned if we if we yes. lived in a society where the NBA and, this, of course, uh, yeah. the Nigerian Judicial Council were serious yeah. bodies... Would you expect yeah. judges to be sanctioned regularly when these Definitely. things are spotted? Definitely. You remember two or three years ago when judges were being arrested, we all shouted, oh, this is human rights abuse. Each time we are on the verge of breakthrough in Nigeria, we allow sentiment and emotion to thwart such efforts. Okay? Judges were being arrested because there was very strong evidence against them that they were receiving bribes. But we already made noise, that thing, it died down, and now we are revisiting it. Okay? So the National Judicial Council, the Chief, uh, the Chief Judge of Nigeria, should come up with a strategy whereby corrupt judges should be sanctioned. They should be brought, not just dismissed, they should be tried for corruption. Yeah. But the question is, how do you get them? How do you spot them? Because everything remains, oh, it has been done. Do we have evidence until we have people who can, I mean, whistleblowers to focus on the judiciary, okay? And they should be sanctioned until we have proof or evidence. We just continue to complain that, yes, justice is being bought and sold, but there's nothing anybody can do about it. Yeah, but I, I think I would also, just before we go, um, yeah. In reaction to, you know, what you mentioned about judges, uh, houses being, you know, uh, doors being broken down, I think it was the approach yeah. or the yeah. way um, and manner that was carried out that got criticism. It wasn't yeah. because anyone was actually defending the judges. It was the way it was carried out. And we've also had similar conversations on many other cases where yes, the Nigerian... But, 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 um, Osaro, um, at the end of the day, we threw away the baby with the bathwater. We didn't like the way... The houses were being invaded. We didn't like the approach. But today, yeah, but it, it was still left for the Nigerian yeah. government to show reasons yeah. why that was done and show proof to Nigerians yeah. that these people were actually yeah. corrupt. Till now, we still haven't seen any of these people found guilty of corruption or, or, or sentenced. What were the former chief justice that was humiliated out of office? There was proof. The Code of Conduct uh, Tribunal showed proof against the former chief justice. Have we forgotten? And the guy was asked to leave. <laughs> Well, well, 
Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if we want drastic solution, we must be ready to take a drastic approach. Nothing good comes easy, my brother. Nothing good comes easy. Nigeria is in a situation whereby we need to be brutal. We need to be brutal. I love the rule of law. I love the supremacy of the law. But sometimes you need you need to put it aside to achieve your long-term objective. Nigeria is blatant, my brother. No, not a lot of not a lot of people will agree with that, you know, because there, has yeah, to, yes, there still has to be respect for the rule of law and the constitution. And um, I, I, unless we have systems yeah. that make sure yeah. that you can't beat, you know, being being caught, you know, when you when you uh, yeah. fail, then we're going yeah. to continue to use this very very you know crude means. Uh, for justice. It's pretty much the same thing we've complained about with Nigerian police, arresting people recklessly yeah. simply because they, they look fraudulent or they smell fraudulent and, you know, eventually yeah. there's no case. But anyway, um, it's a totally different mm -hmm. conversation. We'll, we'll get there one day. Hopefully. <laughs> they were like, well, thank you very much. I enjoyed uh, speaking with you in the mornings. Have a thank great you, Wednesday sir. ahead. Same here. Thank you. Bye. All right. Good morning once again. Thanks for staying with us on The Breakfast. Uh, we'll take a very short break. When we come back, what happened on this day in history? I'll be telling you about a kidnapping that led to the loss of more than 300 lives in Russia. And of course, down here in Nigeria, some persons were sacked for coming late to work. That comes up next. <laughs>